It obviously is more cost effective, but that doesn't mean that it's right for you. Hello, lovely couples, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Lauren, wedding planner and owner of Bluebird Creative. If you are new here, congratulations on your engagement. You are about to start a super exciting journey. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the bell so that you'll be notified every week when a new video lands. I provide a weekly dose of wedding planning goodness for the modern couple. So if that sounds like you, you are in for a treat. This week we are touching on wedding websites. What should you not do, but more importantly, what should you do? So let's dive in. I've got about eight tips for you and I'm also going to show you inside the wedding website Joy. I signed up, pretended that I'm getting married. I am already married so that I can then show you around and you can see what that type of wedding website is like, how easy it is to use for yourself, and what you need to think about, and what you don't need to think about. So let's jump on in. So first things first, before we jump in and I take you inside my computer, because obviously I'm gonna show you inside of Joy, but what you need to consider, if you're thinking about having a wedding website, you do need to decide what type of site you want and if it's right for you. You may decide that actually you just want to send out paper invites with an attached details sheet, giving your guests all the information that they need on that. It obviously is more cost effective to have a wedding website, but that doesn't mean that it's right for you. So when you're choosing your wedding website, there are a couple of different options. You can either go to a specific wedding website site, like Joy, or there's Minted. I think there might be one called The Knot as well. I personally use a software for wedding planning called Isle Planner, and in that, we can create our own wedding websites for our clients, which is really handy. So I tend to use that one, but if you're planning your own wedding, like you guys most likely are, then I'm looking at Joy, for example, in today's video. But you may decide that actually you want to go down the Wix or the Squarespace route and design something completely bespoke to you. The cost may be a little bit more, but you can create something completely different or even from scratch. With the wedding websites, they've got templates. It's really, really simple. Personally, I would go down that route because you don't need to make life more complicated for yourself, do you? They've got really simple templates. They're really nice. You can still tweak them and make them bespoke to you and add all your information and change the colors and change the fonts. So I think they're the easiest option without making life too difficult, which is why I decided to show you inside one of those today. So. Let's talk about the things that you actually need to include in your wedding website. So I've got seven more tips here for you now that we've discussed the type of website that you might go for. Now the first one is you'll need to add your story, a little about you page. Now I'm gonna show you inside the site in a second. So you'll see that there is already a space for your story. You can add in your engagement story or how you guys met. And yes, your friends will likely know it, but it's just a really nice touch and it makes the website more personal, which essentially is what your wedding and everything is all about. It's adding those personal touches and those details that make you guys you. Okay, guys, so we are currently inside of Joy. It has given me our own URL, which says withjoy.com forward slash Lauren Goodman and Simon Goodman, which is my husband. So clearly we are already married and you can actually change that. So we've currently got a home page. I'm not going to go into too much detail here, guys, but I just want to give you a really quick overview of how it works. This is what it would look like on a phone and this is what it would look like on um, a computer and there is actually an app that goes with this as well, which I think is so good. Enhancing the guest experience. I'll talk about that a lot. So we can go into edit design and you can change your accent color here and you can change whether you want one page or whether you want the tabs, which I selected. I selected this particular background. There's lots to choose from and the fonts as well, which is really handy. So there is the possibility to change and tweak things and make it a bit more bespoke to you guys which I think is great. So this bit here gives you an idea of the different pages, which we're currently talking about on the video today. And there'll be different tabs on the website, which is great. So the story one we've just discussed, talking about, and let's click on that actually. And you can see, tell them how you met, that sort of thing. And then this little tab here for tidbits, which I think is great. How did you first meet? Who made the first move? How's Who's going to take out the trash? That sort of thing. I love that. I think it's really nice to just add those details. So that's fantastic. And you can add a photo to go on the top there, um, here. 
So that's really cool. So add that into the site, whether it's the engagement story, how you met, or just some fun things, your favorite things, what you guys love to do as a couple, throw it in there, give them the details because those little details will likely run through your wedding planning and your wedding day as well. So it's kind of a story and it follows through on the journey. You still with me? The next thing that you want to make sure that you're adding on your website is a schedule. Now, a lot of people nowadays are actually going for a bit of a wedding weekender, whether that's going simply to the pub the night before with some friends or going for a meal or whether you're actually away for the whole weekend and you've got organized events and activities over the weekend it may just be super simple for example you may actually go to the pub for a roast on the sunday if you're getting married on a saturday and just meet up with some of your close friends whatever it is it's a really good idea to add the information that you need to add onto the website if everybody's not invited perhaps don't do that. But within this website, we'll have a look at the options that you've got and actually how you can group people differently, which is really good. But it's a good idea to at least put the general timings, specifically of your wedding day, when it's starting, when the wedding reception starts, especially if you've got evening guests coming and if there are any other activities either side of the actual wedding day itself. Then people know exactly what they're doing. And I'm not gonna lie, people are always thinking about their tummies. So as long as they know, when they're being fed or when they can plan on feeding themselves, then they're gonna be happy. So make sure you give those timings and people will be happy. Then we've touched on the schedule. So we've got that tab here. Again, this is just so easy. So you can literally be adding in all the different things, the different days, who's invited. So you can actually, I wasn't sure when I was talking just now, but you can actually add in the different people, which I'll go into when we go into the guest list in a minute. So you can actually add the labels in. So it, it's amazing. So people won't see stuff if they're not invited to that bit. You can even put in what the dress code is. I mean, literally, does this get any better? This is so good. I'm getting a bit excited, can you tell? I love how organized it is and how much detail you can actually add. The next thing I just wanna to touch on is privacy. Now, some of you may be thinking, oh, okay, that's great. Put a wedding website out there everyone can see it. Not necessarily because not everybody will know the link. And even if they do have the link, you can set it up with a password, which means that only people with the password can enter the website and have all the details to your wedding day. You may want things a little bit secret. I know, for example, I never wanted anyone to post a copy of my wedding invite on their social media because I didn't want random people turning up. So you may be thinking the same thing, but it can be password protected, which I think is amazing. The next thing I think is really important, really important to add to your wedding website, which you can't really do with an invite. You can only give brief details because there's only so much space on a card, unless you're adding loads of cards, which again is going to cost more money. So with a wedding website, you can really enhance your guest experience by giving them as much information and detail about the logistics of the wedding day and what they need to know as possible. So for example, what might that include? Travel, what travel information do they need? Are they flying in? What are the airports? Are they getting the train? What's the train station? What directions might they need to find the venue if it's in the middle of nowhere or Timbuktu? Does the sat nav take them somewhere random? Give them some extra directions. Is it harder to find? What do they need to look for? that kind of thing. Are most of your guests likely to need accommodation? Do some research on some local accommodation, pop that on the website so it makes their experience easier because they can literally just click on the links or Google the place that you've suggested and go and investigate and book somewhere to stay. So it's really handy and it also means that more of your guests will likely be staying at the same places, which just makes for a nice experience for everybody. Another thing that I think is really important to, you can also include things like parking information or anything like that that you think is going to enhance their experience. So we're talking about the guest experience. So here there's this tab called travel. You could change it to something else if you wanted to, but I think this explains it really. So getting in, so if you're flying in, where are you flying into? Like I just mentioned, getting downtown. I mean, this is obviously American, but just, you know, where to go, what you need to do, summer in the high season. I don't really know what we're talking about there. <laughs> this would be where the wedding is, where you might suggest some accommodation, and so on. So lots of different bits of information for your guests to perhaps get around. Maybe they're staying for the weekend, you're giving them some options. I think it's a really, a really good idea. And then you can see 
how that would look on the website here and you can click on view site to actually look at it properly but yeah I just really like the layout of this it's super simple and why would you go to another website when you literally have the such a good layout and everything like covered for you. So I'm going to swiftly move on to the next topic which is FAQs. So anything that you didn't put in the guest experience page you can pop on an FAQs page which again you can't do when you're doing an invite guys so it's making the guest experience amazing. So with the FAQs page that's where you can tackle those questions like are my children invited? Do I get a plus one? What's the parking situation? Your thoughts on social media? Would you rather that nobody took photos during the wedding ceremony? Do you have a no social media rule? I've done a post on social media and your wedding, so I'll link that for you here. I think that's really important to know where you stand on that. So again, check that video out that I just linked and you can put your thoughts on the website so your guests know where you stand as well. So you don't have to tackle that on the day because hopefully they would have read the questions. So the frequently asked questions tab would be this guest q a and you can literally write in what you think the frequently asked questions are and answer them so you know the get the kids question comes up pop that in there what will the weather be like i mean that's interesting but perhaps if you're getting married abroad or some in a totally different location or you have guests coming from a totally different location add that in um so yeah so that's um that's a good one really important section I think. Now obviously one of the most important things that your wedding website will do is collate your invitations and your RSVPs. When I say invitations I mean the guest names. So you'll be able to put all your guest names in and you can actually on this particular website group them into different categories and different labels which is amazing so I'll show you that in a second. And you can then obviously collect their RSVPs in. I love the RSVP process on this, which I will show you really briefly. And you can see that basically you can go through a series of questions and once they've answered one, it takes you on to the next one. And if they answer yes or no, it takes you on to the next one and so on. So I will touch on that really quickly so you can have a look and see how that works. But I think that's a really cool idea and a really nice touch to the site. And again, it enhances the guest experience. So moving on to the guest list here, guys. So this is where you're gonna spend a lot of time to start with once your website's kind of like the basics are made. I'm not going to go into this in too much detail because you can have a play around with it if you decide to use this site, but I just love how much detail you can add into this. So you can obviously, you'll add guests, you can then add different labels. So this Marcel, she is in list A, she's a maid of honour, she's coming to the rehearsal dinner, she's going to be sat on table two, and she's part of the wedding party. So having all these different labels means that perhaps if the wedding party are having a meal on the Friday night, then you can just label that part of the day for just the wedding party and only they will see it when they log in to the website, which is really good. So you can organise your labels, count summary, so who's RSVP'd, and then you've got all these tabs over here and you can move things around. So loads of detail and I think it's, I think it's really informative, it's great. This is the RSVP section. So once guests start RSVPing, you'll get the information here and you can, when they're RSVPing, you can get them to answer questions. So obviously, usually it would be, can you attend? <laughs> so you would perhaps put that and word it however you want to and either they can accept or they can decline if they can't make it. And you can add some extra information. So if they say that they can accept, they might move on to the food question. And then after that, it might be a multiple choice question. Would you like a hotel room? yes no this sort of thing so I think it's really good like what's your mailing address share how you know the couple wish them well you could also add in there you know give us a song suggestion for the evening or you know anything that you want to add that's a little bit quirky and some different details you can do that it makes it more about you and it makes it more personal. And finally, it is a good idea to have a page about your gift registry, which not many people tend to do nowadays over here in the UK, but you may decide to do it. Most couples live together already. They've usually bought a house before they've got married nowadays. They've probably got stuff for their home, so they probably don't want to ask for that. Some couples will say that if you want to get us a gift, then a donation towards our honeymoon would be ideal. So have a think about what you want to write, but people will want to buy you something, guys. So it is really good to address that so that they know what to buy you and you don't end up with just random gifts because they wanted to buy you something and you didn't have any information because what are you gonna do with the random stuff, you know? You will still get random stuff, just to say. It always happens. Take it with a pinch of salt. It's usually quite funny, but give them a guide. 
really handy to just give them a guide. So there we go, guys. Super, super simple. Do those things. Your guests will have an amazing experience. Everyone will know what's happening. Super easy. I think this website is pretty good to be fair there are other ones like i mentioned so go check them out as well i'm not affiliated with this at all it was just one that i thought was quite handy and i wanted to investigate so there you go i hope you guys have a fantastic week don't forget we launched the vlog last week Ugh. if you haven't seen it then go and check out i'll link it here for you our first ever vlog that's going to be going live every sunday and we've got one obviously coming up again this sunday which gives you a bit more of a behind the scenes of how i run Bluebird Creative and Bride Academy. Anyway, guys, have a fantastic week and I will see you next week for some more wedding planning. Goodness. See you then.